Hi everyone. I put together three questions that I'm going to make videos for today. Each question demonstrates a different skill that is typical of basic skills questions that can be applied to all derived questions. So the first question I'm going to do today is called a double uh, of course, you can have triple universal derivations and so on, but uh, once you sort of learn how it works, it's all very straightforward. So, this is uh, nothing special to this question. You always start with writing the show line as per normal for all x, for all y, fx, arrow, gy. Now, we always want to break down our show line before we do anything else. So, we know that when we have a universal in our show line, we show an instantiation. And the instantiation can be to any arbitrary variable. So in this case, it's anything that uh, does not appear unbound in a previous line of premise. Now, the easiest instantiation to do is let uh, the actual sort of variable that you're peeling away with universal be itself. So in this case, I just left x as x. So now I look at my show line, it's universal. So again, I show an instantiation of it, fx arrow g y. You have to leave y, what do you, sorry, you don't have to leave y alone, you could change it to something else, but you can't change it to x because x appears unbound in a previous line to 3. Now I look at my show line and it's just a conditional, so I go fx, that's assume cd, and on line 5 I just need to show uh, g y, and then I get not g y, assume id. This type of breakdown is pretty typical of predicate logic questions, and the trick here is that you just need to know how to actually uh, break down a universal show line. So this is a WD, but it doesn't make anything more complicated. Now, some students might be tempted to actually go straight from line one to line three. You can't do that. You need to do each universal derivation set up separately. All right, now that I've done that, I just look at my uh, premises here. I have HA, which is a nice singleton. This is a big fat conditional, so I know I need to modus ponens or modus tollens that. This is an existential, and the rule is always EI first. So if I can existentially instantiate, I will. Now, typically, I always EI to a new letter, and I pick IJK. But I've just sort of designed this question to point out something stupid. Here, I is actually already used somewhere in my proof, so I can't actually EI to I. I need to EI to something brand new that appears nowhere in my proof, so I'll pick J. This is just a silly trick that uh, some professors like to do every so often. Uh, so that's premise 3 EI. Okay, so that's nice. I've actually sort of pinned down my A variable. Now what do I do? Well, at this point, I'm basically looking to um, generate something that will match. So uh, let's see. Oh, okay, here we go. So here I have the... Um, the conditional here, it looks like I can actually build the cons the antecedent. How? Well, if I need there exists a W, there exists a Z, H, Z, and not G, W, well, then I really just need some sort of H alpha, and I also need some sort of not G beta, where these are actually sort of not necessarily the same. Um, okay, well, that's actually really easy. So H alpha, I have for my premise, H, A, so I can um, put H, A down, well, I'm not even going to bother doing that. Um, instead, I'll actually just join H, A, and not G, Y together. That's premise 1, 6, a join. And then over here on line 9, I can, sorry, I forgot my A, I can existentially generalize. Now, again, I'm just going to do it one step at a time. First, I existentially generalize my H to Z, and I leave my not G, Y alone and that's line 8 eg, and then here on line 10, I will existentially generalize my g predicate to w, because I need a perfect match with the antecedent of premise 2. So this is line 9 eg. Okay, so now I'm ready to modus ponens. I get for all x uh, ax, and that's 10 premise uh, with 2 modus ponens, and on line 12, I can UI to match my line 7, uh, and I get AJ, and that's 11 UI. On line 13, I can cite that I have a contradiction on line 12, 7, ID, and I've successfully shown my GY.
Okay, now I just have to close everything property. What was GY? GY was the consequent of line three show. So I can immediately, sorry, that's a mistake. I can immediately close um, line three by citing the consequent, which is five CD. And that closes that. At this point, I just need to close my re remaining two show lines and they're both universal derivations. So um, I can close line two by pointing to the instantiation I got, which is three UD, close. And on line 16, I do the same thing for my one line one show line. I cite line two UD, and that's it. Okay, there's nothing to this proof. I hope you see it's actually very easy. Um, I just designed it to show you what double moves look like. So if you have something that has two universals in front of it, it's no big deal. You just peel them away one at a time by setting a universal derivation. Uh, the other thing here is I also demonstrated on line 8, 9, and 10 what a double existential generalization looks like. Um, this shouldn't seem strange. This is a very basic, easy proof. But keep in mind that double universals is no big deal. We can show them just as normal. Okay, good luck.